Ah, uh, Fire Emblem. I remember when they first invented Fire Emblem. Sweet, sweet Fire Emblem. I always hated it! Uh, Top 10 things I hate about Fire Emblem, let's go. Not like this. Number 10. I'm just gonna dub this one Corrin Sexuals. Characters that only have one support or can only bond with the player themselves. And no, the supports with the kid if they're the parent don't count. You know what I mean. These handful that only your stand-in main character can talk to or have a relationship with. They don't get to talk to anyone else. They're not allowed. Back into the cells, Cretans. In a series all about getting the player attached to rosters of individuals, viewing their interactions and growing bonds amongst each other, why have entire characters that can only talk to one person in your army? They might as well be cardboard cutouts chilling in the corner of your base. What's even worse is that some of you guys out there have kids with them. Who are you people? Who invited you? Why are you here? I could see this coming from Bernadetta, considering she's an actual shut-in, and her teacher is probably the only person she could be forced to interact with if she really wanted to avoid it. But even she's got supports with a handful of people. There's simply no excuse for these guys. Maybe in an alternate universe they got some better characterization and are actually worthwhile, but not in this one. Thank you, next. Number nine, repetitive animations. I know graphics have never been Fire Emblem's selling point, but very few people that I've ever spoken to have said that they didn't love the sprite work and animations of the GBA era games. These being Fire Emblem Binding Blade, Blazing Blade, and Sacred Stones. These sprites and animations have so much charm and character, elevating battles to levels that have almost never quite been successfully reached since. Those animations were so good. 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 However, the animations that play out in battle are unfortunately pretty much always the same each time, regardless of the game. I do feel that the GBA games can get away with it though, since they're 2D pixel animations and they're just so entertaining to watch and so beautifully done. They're flashy and creative and never really get old, especially when units like Swordmasters get critical hits. It's that very thing that made me want to take on the name Lucky Crit. But because the ridiculous, over-the-top nature of these animations is not consistent throughout the series, later entries don't quite get away with always having the same actions take place on screen each time. At least, not for me, and especially not in the transition to 3D. In the later games, animations have, for the most part, mellowed out. Unless, of course, you're playing Fire Emblem Fates, where characters tend to float and flutter around dramatically like inflatable balloon people. These newer animations tend to be a bit more realistic in terms of the action and movement that occurs, which is understandable, but it inadvertently exacerbates the problem of seeing the same things happen on screen repeatedly throughout your time playing the game. So not only do you not get the super flashy crazy stuff happening on quite the same level anymore, but with the glory of polygonal models and three-dimensionality in modern games, you also now get to witness pretty much the same camera movements and angles play out each time alongside the same movements of the models themselves. This becomes grating. This causes people to turn off these animations altogether after a period of time. And honestly, in my eyes, that's a shame. Here's Fire Emblem Echoes for the 3DS. This game has great animations. I love these animations. However, with the way that they're set up in the game's code, they just become meticulous and repetitive. For example, this game features some flashy kill animations for when your character finishes off the enemy in the current round of combat. They're different from the usual attacks that you get to see. These animations are cool and unique to this game, but because they happen every time you're about to get a kill, and there's only a few different variations of these kill animations for each class, eventually you just get sick and tired of them. I've actually felt myself wishing there was a percentage chance of just watching a normal attack that finishes an enemy play out, like how it would in a game like Awakening. Fire Emblem Three Houses is very similar in this regard. While it does have the added screen variety of random soldiers running around like idiots in the background, if you try using a combat art, guess what? Same model and camera movements every time. No variety aside from the character model itself performing it, and those aren't all that different either. I just wish we had a little bit more randomness injected here, like with variable camera movements, angles, zooms, and model motions. Just a little bit of variety with these would go so far in spicing it up and making these remain interesting to watch throughout numerous playthroughs. Bare minimum, if things are going to stay much as they have been, at least bring back the crazier and more engaging animations for better eye candy. 
Number eight, repetitive models. I know this is a similar complaint to repetitive animations, but having the same or similar character models also contributes in souring the game's battle scenes, and in some cases for me, lends to game fatigue. I think this problem was the absolute worst it's ever been in games like Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and New Mystery, where your characters were largely all even the same color in battle. Got a green paladin? Guess what? Orange armor. Red paladin? Still orange. I'm not even complaining about the actual 3D models that they turned into sprites here. I actually don't mind these at all, unlike most. I just mean that if your character's got purple hair, then it better be correct when you get to the battle screen. Having everyone appear the same when you finally get to that epic showdown always lends to making you feel like it didn't even matter which goon you actually chose to build up and focus on in your group. When all the dudes look the same on the battlefield, how can we care deeply for them? There's even times where minimal effort could go into alleviating this problem, like with class changing in Fire Emblem Awakening and Fates. Oftentimes, if you change a character into a more generic class line that they aren't typically, you end up with a unit clad in what fans would refer to as the generic blue armor. They throw away and disregard their unique and original color palette for a boring standard one where everyone looks the same. Now, I could be mistaken, but to me this is such an easy problem to fix. Just have units better retain their individuality by at least keeping their color scheme no matter what class the player dumps them into. I believe this would go a long way towards keeping things fresh and units feeling more unique throughout gameplay, even if the models themselves don't change much. As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't take that much to differentiate. Even just subtle things like a slightly different stance, or ponytails, or armor ornamentation could go so far in making characters unique and interesting to look at. And this uniqueness should always follow them no matter what route they go into. That's why when Intelligent Systems doesn't bother to go the extra mile in this department, it's infuriating to me. This is a series about unique individuals the player is meant to fall in love with as they play. Characters that, if they die, they die forever. And no one else will be quite like they were. Don't put any obstacles in the way of that, like making them all look and feel exactly the same. Three Houses does a much better job keeping each character unique by showing their heads and hair color no matter the class. However, there are definitely some generic class outfits you can end up in here, and I also find it deeply disappointing how generic and ugly the color scheme of basic units like Cavaliers, Paladins, and stuff like Wyvern Lords are. This is some of the worst they've ever looked, honestly, color-wise. There was an opportunity here to keep units' colors going in these classes, and they pretty much just ignored it and made them basic silver and gray. Really disappointing. If you take a look at a class like Assassin, though, you can definitely find some really cool and unique colors amongst the cast, like Shamir, for example. The situation here is a mixed bag, like usual, unfortunately. Number seven, Us. Over the past five main entries in the Fire Emblem series, four of them have allowed us to insert ourselves into the story, just like I did with your mom. It didn't just start with Fire Emblem New Mystery, though. In fact, the origins of this go back much further. But the recent expansion of this feature and the newfound emphasis of making sure the player has an avatar to fully immerse themselves into each game world has undoubtedly brought along with it some dire consequences. In contrast, these consequences weren't really a thing back in Fire Emblem 7, for example, where inserting ourselves didn't do all that much. We were kind of just there as the tactician, and sometimes the characters would shift their portraits to look and speak directly at us. That was about the extent of it, and it was cool. In fact, having ourselves in these games and these worlds, even now, where you can literally fall in love with some of these characters and start families, is kinda neat in a way. But somewhere along the line, new mystery in Wigan, <laughs> intelligence systems began involving our characters pretty deeply with the plot. And that's where this problem started. How about your self-insert is a main character, or hugely important in the story, so they can actively make it more boring because the character has to be generic since it needs to represent all of us. Yes, great idea, let's do it. When the player becomes an integral character to the game's main plot, it just creates way more issues than it's worth. The character has to represent each of us, so they have to have generic aspects to them that we can all connect with. Then when you focus on this generic character and prop them up into the spotlight, it's just a recipe for disaster. And Corrin and Fates repeating essentially the same mistakes that they made with Robin in Awakening does not help this situation. While it's certainly fun to think of some of these characters as your real-life siblings, when Korn has to make decisions or has involved moments in the storyline that we wouldn't necessarily do or say or agree with, you've already lost the connection with the player. When the obviously bad dude sends Korn on a mission and Korn just says, hmm, okay, 
the player is left angrily staring at the screen and kidnapped into going along with it. Even the generic facade that they were going for with Corrin gets shattered in these moments. Even worse is the fact that at the end of it all, you're left with a story that just still sucks. The reason why this isn't higher in this list is that I can usually accept some of the shortcomings of this feature in exchange for the cooler aspects of it, and the fact that I personally think Byleth was at least a bit of a better done version of this system, and so paints its future in the Fire Emblem games as quite a bit more promising to me. Number 6. Lack of Online Functionality Fire Emblem is not a multiplayer or online focused series. It's very much a solo journey, a personal experience for the player as they make their way through the game and build up their characters. And that's okay, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I think most people even prefer that. But what good is building up units, getting amazing level ups, or making unique character builds if you can't even brag to your friends about it or at least strut your stuff? There's a community aspect to these types of things that just feels lacking to me without these features in the games. Fire Emblem Heroes has definitely improved things in this area, but even that game, a bunch of years in, still has silly and poorly thought out limitations like severely limited friends lists. Oh yeah, and uh, thanks for the amazing extra 50 friend slots, Intelligent Systems. I will now gladly return my lips onto your butthole. It's honestly saddening to see extremely bare bones interactions with others and their castles, and no way of actually playing or entertaining friends as you play alongside each other in real life. And this one's a mobile game for crying out loud. Look, I'm not saying that Fire Emblem needs these features in order to make a good Fire Emblem game, but in terms of long-term interest in each individual game, it would go a long way to keep people interested if each one had more to it outside the main story. The success of the series might not entirely depend on it, but imagine how much more successful it could be if it did adequately incorporate these features. PvP has also never been done particularly well in the few Fire Emblem games it's appeared in. It's usually inundated with cheaters or max stat enemy teams with AIDS riddled skill combinations that could make even the most hardened of Fire Emblem War veterans cry into their oatmeal. Huh? Like giving every character Imhulu in Shadow Dragon. Nice. Thanks for that. I'm not trying to argue that Fire Emblem needs PvP or online functions. I'm just saying that if intelligence systems could come up with a way of trading items, skills, or units, akin to how games like Animal Crossing can create entire online trading and exchange communities, there's definitely a lot more player interaction that could take place and keep these games alive in the minds and hearts of their players for longer periods of time as the years go by. Maybe we need shiny Fire Emblem characters to hunt for. The way it stands now, players race through the game, maybe even give it multiple playthroughs if the devs are lucky, and then the game quietly goes out with a whimper. Meanwhile, other games are just getting started and remain fresh for players as the months go by perhaps even with continued content updates to keep them coming back. Three Houses even managed to do this with its DLC, but I'm not advocating for more DLC. Heroes is a great example of what I mean though. If Heroes was more akin to a mainline Fire Emblem game, there's no way that we'd still be playing the same game daily for four plus years now. More buzz between fans is never a bad thing, and unfortunately, more often than not, these games fail to achieve a level of acceptable online functionality or even bare minimum utilization of the console platform and unique feature sets that they're a part of. And that's a shame, period. And for today, we're gonna have to end it right here, but stay tuned for part two and we'll wrap up this top 10 list. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know your top 10 things that you don't like about the Fire Emblem series in the comment section down below. Be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss the next part. And if you use any alternative platforms like BitChute, Odyssey, or Rumble, be sure to check out the channel and subscribe there. In the future, I'm hoping to release some exclusive content on those websites. Thank you so, so much for watching. It's good to be back. See you next time.